Look, if you want your people to feel appreciated, it's not about what you give them. It's not about some random water bottle or set of kitchen knives or even giving them a luxury trip somewhere. It's about how you treat them on a day-to-day -day basis. Hey leader, David Burkus here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to help make employees feel appreciated. I mean, this is a huge part of being a leader. And most companies are in agreement on that. Most leaders are in agreement on that, that it's important to appreciate the work that your people do. Most of us agree that if we could increase appreciation, we would see some extremely positive results. And the research supports that idea. For example, researchers Adam Grant and Francesca Gino found that when managers express gratitude to their people for their work, they see increases in productivity. And Perry Gu at Regent University found that when team members feel respected and appreciated from their people, they perform tasks better. So yeah, they're more productive, but they're also healthier and have higher levels of job satisfaction. Appreciation is clutch. But unfortunately, appreciation is also really misunderstood. The research we cited shows that it's less about the gifts and more about the day-to-day -day actions that are happening, not only from you as a leader, but as the whole team. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to make employees feel appreciated, not from what you can give them, but from how you can serve them. Let's get started. The first way to help employees feel more appreciated is to touch base with them early and often. Talk to them, maybe more often than you should, and not from a standpoint of calling them into much more meetings. So, you know, I think as we add more and more and more meetings to the average knowledge worker's calendar, it makes you just wanna show up to each new meeting with a shirt that says, so we're not talking about meetings. In fact, we're talking about something that gets a bad rap. We're talking about small talk. We're talking about good mornings. We're talking about checking in with them at lunchtime. We're talking about making conversation in the break room or the virtual break room if you have to create one. We're talking about chit chats and seemingly unimportant things. We're not talking about calling them into more meetings, but we are talking about that incredibly valuable pre-meeting conversation that happens. Research from Jessica Methot at Rutgers University, for example, showed that small all talk, chit chat is where we build bonds because we have non-work conversations that reveal our personalities to each other. And as a result, we connect over things other than the work. And when we connect over things other than the work, we feel more understood and we feel more appreciated. The second way we can help employees feel more appreciated is to give unsolicited feedback. Give feedback more often than is scheduled. Two types of feedback here, by the way, and you don't want to be giving both at the same time. Give constructive feedback more often than just, you know, the annual performance review or any kind of quarterly reports you do. In fact, give it just after you've observed tasks or the completion of a project. It, it's most meaningful to give people feedback that helps them get better when the things you're trying to help them get better doing are still fresh on their mind. So give them unsolicited feedback in that regard. In the same way, give them unsolicited positive feedback as well. Not at the same time, we're not talking about serving them some ugly compliment sandwich, but we're talking about praising them early, often, and unsolicited. Whenever a win, even the smallest of wins happen, add some praise to it so people know that you really do appreciate them. You're not just saying nice things when the HR department sends out the form that says, well, it's time for that quarterly say nice things about people thing. Make sure they know that it's genuine, and the way to make it genuine is to make it seemingly random and unsolicited. And this is not just about you. Uh, researcher Ron Friedman found that most high-performing teams report a higher than average level of positive affirmation team-wide across the whole team. Of course, you as a leader demonstrate unsolicited feedback, but the goal here should be to make sure that people find praising each other to be a regular rhythm, a regular habit, a regular part of their culture, and in doing so, not only do they feel more appreciated, they work better together as well. It's actually kind of a, a virtuous cycle. People praise, so they're more productive, so there's more to praise, so they're more productive, and it starts with you teaching the team how to do it by example. The third way to help employees feel more appreciated is to be flexible 
and trust. You know, we know from decades of research and things like self-determination theory that flexibility and autonomy are huge motivators, but providing flexibility and autonomy also signal trust. And we know from the research of people like Paul Zak that trust is a major predictor, not only of productivity, but again, of appreciation. When we feel trusted, we want to respond with more trustworthy behavior. When we feel trusted, we feel more appreciated. And as a result, we want to serve the people who are appreciating us more. So make sure that you're providing flexibility and autonomy, not just because you need to keep up with the way the world is changing and the fact that most people are going to need more flexibility and autonomy in their work day, but make sure you're doing it from a standpoint of trust as well. Meaning just because you're working from home today, I don't need to check in with you all of the time. I don't need a list of tasks you're going to do. I trust you. And in trusting you, I'm going to help you and me honestly feel more appreciated and more productive. And the last way that you can help your people feel more appreciated is to talk growth. Talk about their growth, their career goals, and where they want to go. You know, we know this from research like Teresa Mobile, one of my favorite researchers of all time, showed that progress is a powerful human motivator, but you can only help people show progress in their individual lives if you know about them. And unfortunately, the way a lot of us do performance reviews, for example, in these growth and development conversations, it's like a weird kabuki theater where we're all pretending to be something else in front of a screen. You know, We talk about how we wanna grow inside the company, and so the manager talks about how much growth opportunity there is in the company. In reality, that person is only gonna be here for three or four years. We know that because we know that in the research, and then they're gonna have to make a different career pivot or a different jump in order to keep growing. But if you're having open and honest conversations about growth with your people, you you already knew that. You already know what their long-term goals are, and you know you can help them get there, even if it means they're going away from you at a time. Doing that not only helps people be more motivated and actually grow towards their goals, it helps people feel more appreciated because they feel more understood, because their performance was better in the time that they were with them, because they felt more trusted, because they felt more appreciated, they responded in kind and they built a much better team because those leaders were willing to have honest conversations about growth. So talk growth, no matter where that growth may take people, and they'll feel more trusted, more appreciated, and they'll respond in kind by being more motivated for you and for the whole team. So we have these four ways to help people feel appreciated. Touch base early and often, give unsolicited feedback, be flexible and trust, and talk growth. But the thing we need to emphasize here is that, again, these are not gifts you give people, these are habits, these are norms of behaviors. This is the day-to-day -day that makes the difference in whether people feel truly appreciated and whether they respond by being more engaged in the job. And these are not just things leaders need to be doing. Leaders need to lead by example, but they also need to be teaching by example, teaching their people how to do these four things as well. So when you see these behaviors, when you model these behaviors and then you see them reciprocated, make sure you're taking the time to call that out, to praise that in order to get more of it. The ideal situation is not where one where leaders help the team feel appreciated. It's where leaders teach the team to help everybody feel appreciated, to help everybody demonstrate how much they appreciate the work of others, and in doing so, help everybody make the work of others better until you find that everybody on your team is doing their best work ever. Oh, one more thing. If that misunderstanding between gifts you give and things you do on a day-to-day -day basis really resonated with you, then you may want to research a bit more about what your top performers want as well, because it's not just money or tangible rewards. So you're going to want to watch this video here on what high performers actually want from their job. This one, right here, you can see it. Click it.